Hi, folks, and welcome to the Meaningful Money Podcast. This is Season 15, Episode 6. This is the podcast dedicated to helping you put your finances in order. My name is Pete Matthew, and I'm going to share with you everything you need to know and everything you need to do to secure your financial future. I'm here to help you make sense of money. Here we are once again. Great to have you with me. I hope you're really, really well. Now, over the past few weeks, we've looked at how to set some goals, how to move from those goals into clear actions that you need to take. And today, I want to help you distill all that down so that you end up with what is essentially a one-page financial plan. All right, that's where we're going today after the main body of the show. As usual, I'll read out a review that's been left, uh, talk about what we're going to be discussing next time. But before any of that, remember, this podcast continues to be brought to you with the help of my friends at Seven Investment Management. They've been helping me out here since the spring of 2011, which is just amazing level of uh, fortitude and support by a big company. So I'm really grateful to them for continuing uh, to do that. Please check out what they're up to. They're at 7im.co.uk. That's the number 7 im. .co.uk. Also, if you're looking to invest, one of your options is to go to meaningfulmoney.tv slash podcast invest, where you'll find all the information you need to know about the Meaningful Money branded self investment uh, investment platform that 7IM have built. Okay, meaningfulmoney.tv slash podcast invest. Check that out. Okay, way back in May 2015, which is incredible, you know, that's about halfway through this podcast journey. I've been doing this now nearly seven years, <laughs> amazingly. Way back in May 2015, I interviewed uh, a hero of mine, a guy called Carl Richards, financial planner, New York Times columnist, uh, best-selling author. And he is famous for his very simple sketches, which he uses to illustrate pretty profound financial truths. That conversation back in May 2015 was to promote his new book at the time called The One Page Financial Plan. Definitely check it out. Uh, I'll put a link in the show notes to that. I hope I'm not turning on Carl's toes too much uh, by calling this episode the one-page financial plan. You should definitely go back and listen to that episode. But I wanted to nick his title at least and provide you with my own version of what a one-page financial plan might look like, okay? So remember, notes and links, all the good stuff from today's show are at the show notes, which if you're out and about and you've got no means of writing this down, this is the one thing you need to remember, okay? Meaningfulmoney.tv slash pp6. That's for Planning with Purpose. That's the name of this season, episode six, meaningfulmoney.tv slash pp6. Particularly there, there's like a sample or a template of a one-page financial plan, which might help you. Okay, meaningfulmoney.tv slash pp6. Let's have a look at what you need to know first. Okay. Progress comes in daily actions. All right, we can have grand ideas of what our future might look like walking along deserted beaches at sunset, offering our time to the causes that we love and care about because we don't have to work anymore, just helping our kids buy their first car. All of those goals, though, will only be met if we take action consistently, week in, week out, day in and day out. Whether we make progress towards our goals or not will be determined very often in split-second decisions. All right? Shall I buy those lovely new headphones? Or should I save the money instead? (laughs) Should I lease this shiny new car? Or should I keep running the one? It's a bit old, but it's perfectly serviceable. Should I do that and save the lease costs? Those are the decisions, all right? Now, I don't say that to guilt trip anyone. Believe me, me more than anybody needs to hear this stuff, right? But life is a balance, as you know. But if that balance is too often tilted in favor of short-term things, particularly things that don't make you any richer, then the long term will stay long term and you'll never get there. So daily actions are important. And as such, it's essential to keep them in mind for when those decisions have to be made. Sometimes when you're in the moment, you just need a reminder of what it is you're working towards. The second thing you need to know is that plans should be visible, right? The way to keep those daily actions in mind is to keep them visible where possible. So the mental picture I have right now is some kind of a cap with a stick coming out the front with a sheet of paper uh, held on it. So you, it's constantly in your eye line um, with all your goals and actions written on it. But it's probably not that practical. 
But the one page financial plan should help us distill our goals and our actions into a format which we can keep accessible for when we need a reminder about what it's all really about. Whether you keep it with your monthly budget, whether you keep it on your computer desktop or whatever, just having a simple written plan, a reminder of what it's all for will really help you. Apart from the goals and the actions, our plan should also include something about our motivations for pursuing our goals. There's no better way to stay on track than to remember the reasons why we're taking those actions, okay? Third thing we need to know is that plans should be reviewed, right? Any plan is, by definition, wrong <laughs> the second we complete it. You know, we're not comp creating like a battle plan here or a game plan before a football match. What we're planning doesn't generally move that fast, right? But we will need to change our plans and our actions as a result of those as life unfolds. So we're going to deal with formal reviews next week. But we might also need to just make some changes as we go along. They may be temporary, those changes, and we can revert back to what we were doing before. Uh, you know, maybe we need to dip into our emergency fund for something unforeseen. Or sometimes those changes can actually be pretty uh, big and more long-term, like maybe a relationship change means that we need to rethink things. Having a one-page financial plan means that it can be nimble enough to cope with such changes, really for the simple reason that it isn't a big complex beast and we have to rerun all our numbers. It's basically just distilled. I, I keep coming back to that word. Right? None of the fluff or detail, just the pure stuff we need to know and do. Hmm, where have I heard that before? Okay, so... We get it, right? We need a plan. It needs to be visible, easily reviewable. But what should it have on it? All right, well, let's see. It won't surprise you to know that actually this is pretty simple. Okay, let's have a look at what you need to do now. So the first thing uh, on our plan is we need to start with the big goal. We're going to put the big rocks in the jar first and to make sure we have a plan for hitting that big goal. Now, we've actually done the planning over the last uh, two, three weeks, remember. But for most of us, this big goal will be retirement, or FI, financial independence. So remember, the goal needs to be MT, uh, that is measurable and time-bound. Measurable means that there is going to be some kind of monetary value placed on that goal. How much do you need, right? And what is your number, right? Time-bound obviously means it needs to have a date on it as to when you want to achieve that. So we've talked about this uh, quite a bit over the last few weeks, but I wanted to just add in a point that I received as a nudge from listener Richard B. Richard, how are you doing? Great to uh, see you, even though I can't. <clears throat> I'm looking at a camera lens, but you know, it was great to see you last week, uh, a couple of weeks ago in Birmingham over a pizza. So you know who you are. So Richard picked up, actually, when establishing the amount of money you're going to need to make the difference between your secured sources of income and your expenditure, that actually hadn't accounted for tax <laughs> on any withdrawals you might make, say, from a pension fund. So I think we need to address that here. As ever, though, and as I said to Richard when he, uh, he sort of pulled me up on this, I have to strike a balance between being helpful to everyone and addressing every single eventuality, which would make for very, very long episodes. I mean, can you imagine? Now on to part 17.6b, part 4, withdrawal strategies for self-employed carpenters with deferred DB pension schemes who are subject to the money purchase annual allowance, who begin withdrawals in the leap year, and who own a Jack Russell. All right? None of us want that kind of detail. So as simply as I can, the lump sum you're going to need, your number, if you like, is something like the shortfall between income and expenses over the first 25 years of retirement. Right? There's a few ways you can work this out. So let's just say, right, we're going to um, just use an example here. Let's say we've got a fictional couple. They are the same age and they retire at age 60, right? For five years, they've got no income at all, let's just say. They're spending 40 grand a year though, right? Now at age 65, five years in, she has a deferred final salary, DB scheme, kicking in at 18,000 a year. Then at age 67, they both have the full state pension, which will pay them about 17,000 a year, right? So for the, fee, for the years that they have no income, they're gonna to need to find about 40,000 net. That's doable without paying tax if they both have pension funds and ISAs. They'll have 25,000 that they can uh, withdraw within their respective personal allowances, 12,500 each, that's in today's terms, obviously. The rest can come from either pension tax-free cash maybe, if they have DC schemes, um, or it can come from ISA withdrawals. Five years that they have no secured income times 40 grand worth of uh, outgoings 
is 20,000. Uh, no, it isn't. It's 200,000 pounds, okay? Then once the DB scheme kicks in, they're going to need to find two years of the £22,000 shortfall, which is the forty grand expenses less the DB benefits. Right? So that's another forty-four grand they need to have in assets. We've now accounted for seven years in total. With me so far? <laughs> Five years that they've got no income. They've got two years where they've got some DB benefits, so they've got a shortfall between income and outgoings, but less so. Then once the state pensions are in play, they only need to find 5000 worth of capital per year to meet their expenses. 25 years, less than seven years we've already accounted for, is 18 years of 5,000, which is 90,000 pounds. Now, if you add those sort of shortfalls together, you've got 200 grand shortfall for the first five years, 44 for years six and seven, and then 90,000 for the rest of the 25 years that we're talking about. That's 334 grand. Then you need to add an inflation factor to that. All right, listen back to PP3, episode three in this season for how to do that based on a chosen inflation rate and a time to retirement. Now, if you're talking about spending 100 grand a year in retirement, right, you're going to have bigger tax issues, okay? And this is what I mean by having to make this accessible to most ordinary folks like you and me. Most of us are not going to spend 100 grand a year in retirement. We're not, most of us, millionaires. For most of us, the worst case is that we will need to scale up our goal by, say, 20%, right, to take into account basic rate tax on pension withdrawals. That's why it makes sense to add ISAs into the mix as you build wealth to give you a tax-free withdrawal option. The quid pro quo, of course, is that the tax relief on pensions will enable you to build up pension savings more quickly. So you get to a bigger number more quickly, but you have to pay some tax on the way out, right? So it's balancing that, not easy. So let's say you come to a figure by the time you've you know, applied inflation factors and worked out this shortfall or whatever. Let's say it's 500,000, okay? You're gonna need 500,000 pounds inaccessible money that you can get at from your FI date, all right? That needs to go on your financial plan, your one-page financial plan. That's the M in MT, all right? And the T, of course, is the desired FI date. So it should read something like, I need to amass 500,000 by the 1st of September, 2035. Now, if you've already got 300 grand saved, then you could word things to take that into account. I need to amass another 200,000 between now and 1st of September 2035, or whatever your date is. Um, now, we will have established actions that we need to take to reach that goal, and it's going to really come down to a monthly savings amount for most of us, the account or accounts that those savings need to go into, and the investment approach that we're taking. So those need to go onto the one-page financial plan too. For those of you watching on video, I have a very itchy nose right now, so sorry about that. <laughs> Not going to edit it out, you know me. So you might sort of word it such as, to reach my FI goal of 500 grand by 1st of September 2035, I need to save X amount per month into my pension, Y amount per month into my ISA, and I need to invest aggressively. If you want to, you can list the funds that you might be using, okay? So... List your goal and the time scale, and then what you have to do to get there. Monthly savings amounts, into what accounts, and investment approach. That really is all you need to keep in mind, right? That's what we're talking about when we're talking about keeping it simple. Second thing you need to do then is to list the smaller goals, and it's quite a bit more rapid fire from here, okay? And this will largely follow the same process, so it'll probably be a bit simpler. Chances are, for your FI, goal you've got multiple pots that you're saving into pensions you know workplace pension maybe a personal pension as well a sip or something like that and an isa maybe a lifetime isa right so you might have a few pots for the smaller goals probably it'll be in a single pot okay but generally this process will be the same just a bit simpler so we talked a couple of weeks ago about using pots to differentiate money between different goals. So if you've got a plan to buy a camper van in five years' time, you might want to use a different account for that goal. Mention the plan, uh, the account on the plan and the investment approach. But other than that, your goals and your actions on the plan should look pretty similar, really, for the big goal. How much, by when, what your monthly savings goal is, and where you're investing it. Okay, so hit the smaller goals once you've nailed the big one. Pure practical, <laughs> easy for me to say, pure practicalities aside, I think that your plan should have space for your motivations as well. Why are you working so hard towards your goals? So put on your motivations on your one-page financial plan. So if your tr drive towards achieving FI is to, 
I don't know, give you more time to volunteer with the air cadets or the animal shelter or to spend more time ballroom dancing with your partner, then note that down. Having the reasons in front of you will focus the mind and more importantly, it'll focus the will to enable you to stick to the plan and your savings goals. One way to really amplify the effect of this is to include your motivations in terms of your values. So rather than just say, I want to be financially free so that I can spend five days a week ballroom dancing, how could you frame that uh, in the context of what it would mean for you to be financially free? How would others view you? Does that matter? How would your nearest and dearest view you? How would you view yourself? What would it make you feel? What would it do for your soul to be financially free, to know that you had set a goal and met it? What would that do for you in terms of your emotional life, your psychological well-being, okay? How would it feel to be an example to others of somebody who has uh, you know, delivered on their goals by taking consistent action week in, week out, year in, year out? If this stuff is important to you, and everybody's different, I'm not saying it should be, it's your life, right? If actually you don't give a monkey's what anybody else thinks, then that's fine. But I think certainly um, it's worth writing down how we would feel ourselves. You know, it would feel wonderful to be debt-free, to be able not to have to work. This would make me uh, feel good. It would make me feel much less anxious, blah, 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 right? So write down this stuff, internal and external motivations for achieving your goals, right? Write it down, add it to the plan. Keep it succinct though, else we'll never get this on one page. I also think it's worth, number four, making a note of any potential threats to the success of your plans. I think it's important to keep these front of mind as well so that you can head them off as they rise. So if you know that you have a tendency to overspend in the January sales, or if you're already finding yourself reviewing specs for a new laptop that you know actually you don't probably need for another two or three years, then write that stuff down, right? If apathy is a threat, then make a note of that as well. I'm not sure it matters too much how you write it down, but I'd be inclined personally to, to write as if my plan was talking to me, all right? Some might say, and some might prefer to speak in the first person. But I know if it was me, I'd put on my plan something like, be careful of buying unnecessary new equipment for photography when you know you're already too busy to take photographs with the existing kit that you've got, right? So I would have my plan talk to me, right? Maybe that tells you something about my upbringing. I like being told off or something. <laughs> Read into that what you want, psychoanalysts. Um, if, you have, if you know you have a tendency to check your investments too often, then address that. If you think that you might well panic, if there's a pretty nasty decline in the markets, then write it down. Your one-page financial plan will be a great place to add a reminder that declines in markets are temporary and that the advance is permanent. Markets always rise over the long term. Write it down. It's a reminder for you. All right? If you think that's going to be an issue, then use your one-page financial plan as somewhere that you can address this. All right? You can do that in the cold light of day such that when you're feeling the pressure, you can remind yourself of this stuff. You haven't got to go looking at it and, you know, looking for it. It's right there in front of you. I also think uh, the last thing we need to put on, second last thing, is uh, a place to remind ourselves about our solid foundation that, so that we know that our plan won't be completely derailed if the worst happens. So make a space for uh, including your protection program. Doesn't have to be detailed, you know, we'll probably run out of space if we do that. And this will become a one page plus a few lines on the other side financial plan, which doesn't scan quite so well. So make a note of the three main risks, both for you and your partner, if applicable, and note how much would be paid if you die, unable to work, or suffer a critical illness. All right, look back to previous episodes for that. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what the previous episode would be, but I'll make sure there's a link in the show notes, okay, where we deal with this solid foundation of insurance. So write down, what would be paid out if you were to die, if you were unable to work, or were to suffer a critical illness, right? The detail behind it, policy numbers and who it's with and stuff, that can all be in a file elsewhere. But all you need to do is put on your plan, this is what will be paid out if and when, right? And that will serve as a reminder that actually this plan we're building and the actions we're taking towards achieving our goals are built on solid rock. Okay, so foundations, put that in. And then finally, you should set a date for reviewing your one-page financial plan. Now, I think that formal reviews uh, should be completed annually. 
But if you wanted, you could set a three month review schedule. It's also important to be able to uh, be nimble. So it might be that some kind of ad hoc review is necessary and talk about all of that next week. But for the one pager, you could just put on the bottom, this plan will be reviewed on such and such a date and then stick it in your schedule. Now stick it in your calendar to make sure that it happens. Uh, that review, you could update the values there, you know, uh, this is now how much I have saved and this is now what I need to do. And that's where you could decide whether you increase the contribution a bit uh, going forward or whatever, right? Much more on reviews next week. So we've got our big goal, what we need to do to achieve it, how much we need to save, in what account and on what investment basis. And then broadly the same, but probably a bit simpler for our smaller goals. I think we need to put on our motivations and our threats, the foundations we've built of solid insurance so that we can remind ourselves that it's built on solid rock and then a date a reminder as to when it needs to be reviewed. Really, this could be done in about a quarter of an hour. It doesn't need to be a lengthy, involved process, just needs uh, doing, right? It needs uh, to be done so that we have it in front of us, nicely visible, okay? I love simplifying things. Have you gathered that? I'm sure many of you would love to have something much more detailed than what I've described here, but why? The whole point of this is to keep you on track, right? You've done your planning already on paper, on spreadsheets, uh, using Voyant Go if you're an Academy member. The purpose of the One Page Financial Plan is to serve as a reminder that you can keep handy, whether it's in your budget book, in your diary, not on your phone, on your desktop, or whatever. So yeah, I've uh, provided a sort of template plan that you can download to get a sense of uh, what the thing might look like. So over at the show notes in the resources section, meaningfulmoney.tv slash pp6, but don't stick slavishly to it. And you know, if it is one page plus a bit, then that's fine. It's your plan after all. Um, it just <laughs> appeals to my sense of neatness to get it all on one page. But add in whatever you feel is necessary to serve the purpose. It's about the goals, the actions you need to take, the motivations, the threats, and the reassurance of the foundation that you've put in place. It's all it needs to be, right? It doesn't need to be long or more in depth than that. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Any comments or questions, meaningfulmoney.tv slash pp6 is the place to do that. Right, this is from Pele7, presumably not that one. Uh, smart, meaningful, and honest with helping with your finances. What I love about Pete's podcast, above all, the fantastic knowledge and education is his all-round view of finances and how people's beliefs can hold them back. He addresses these beliefs in his Millennial Series podcast. I'm truly thankful for his help with the next generation who are constantly told that they can't get ahead in life. Yes, yeah, rubbish. Yeah, of course they can. With Pete's What You Need to Know and What You Need to Do, he delivers great knowledge to empower people to take full control of their financial lives. Thank you, Pete, and keep up the amazing work. Bravo. Pele seven thank you very much for leaving me a review i really appreciate you taking the time to do that if you want to do that it really helps me out folks so wherever you are listening to this podcast meaningfulmoney.tv slash itunes if you happen to be an apple person um just wherever you can leave me a review please do so because it keeps this show near the top of the rankings keeps it visible which means we can uh, reach more people okay so thank you in advance for that okay the meaningful academy founders launch is closed now but you can still get on the mailing list to be kept informed about the full launches which will happen in due course there's two phases currently to the academy there will eventually be three but the two that are open now, phase one is financial foundations, where we're talking about budgeting, debt elimination, setting up your basic insurances. It's the sort of getting started phase, if you like. Phase two then is called build wealth. And then as the name suggests, that's about setting up great habits for securing your financial future. So that includes deep instruction about how to invest in a simple, repeatable way. Provides access to Voyant Go, which is easily the best financial planning software around and all that good stuff. There's Facebook groups, uh, sort of private Facebook groups included as part of that. So both are closed for the founders launch while we continue to build and refine the content in there. They will both be opened in due course uh, for anybody to join. And obviously, I'll let you know here when that is going to happen. Um, so the financial foundations phase uh, is nearly ready. So that will be opened to the public first. So if you are interested in either of these, then you need to get your name on the mailing list. Meaningfulacademy.com 
academy.com is where you need to go to do that. So meaningfulacademy.com, there is a form there that you can just register your interest to be kept informed about what's going on with future launches and stuff. So meaningfulacademy.com for that. Right, next week, we're going to be talking about robust reviews. Really important. How to review your plans regularly in light of changing circumstances and how to make it quick and easy to do so. Right, really important that we stay on top of our plans, our goals, and most importantly, our actions in light of what's going on. I'll be giving you a sense of uh, why you might need to make changes to your plan and your goals and when you definitely shouldn't, okay? And then how those reviews might look. They don't need to take very long, really, but all of that is going to be covered next week. So looking forward to that. Uh, any questions or comments on today's show, just as a reminder, meaningfulmoney.tv slash pp6. Meaningfulmoney.tv slash pp6. Uh, I'd love to hear from you, so definitely do leave comments and questions there. Don't forget uh, the Facebook group, MeaningfulMoney.tv slash community. More than 2,500 people in there now. Great place to ask questions and get answers. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll uh, see you next week. Cheers. Thank you.